live in an information hungry age and one of the most popular forms of media we use is television. But a revolution has happened that has changed television altogether. Not what's on it, but what's in it. Welcome to Plasma TV. Plasma televisions are filled with gases that allow them to be super thin. To build them means harnessing a fundamental cosmic force. The northern lights flicker in the upper reaches of the Earth's atmosphere. Lightning fills the sky with temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun. All the principles behind these natural wonders are harnessed to produce ultra-thin plasma TVs. The question is, how do they do it? It's a rainy day in Miyazaki in South Japan. In this factory, Hitachi turn out half a million plasma TVs every year. This may look like a normal television screen, but look closer and you'll see not one, but two glass plates clamped together. It's what happens in between these glass plates that is the secret to the production of the ultra-thin plasma television. Between the plates lies a matrix of a million individual and minute cells, each one a fraction of an inch tall. Across the top and bottom layers of the glass are hundreds of electrodes crisscrossing one another. Their job is to create an electric environment that charges a mix of inert gases that will soon fill up those cells. The gases are called neon and xenon. Once charged with electricity, they create plasma. You may have thought there are only three states of matter. However, after liquid, gas and solid, plasma is the fourth. It makes up nearly all the visible matter in our universe. By adding electricity to certain gases, you create plasma, which in turn creates light. So how do you create the northern lights in a TV screen? First, fill it with the neon and xenon. This tiny glass tube is fitted to the back of the screen by a robotic welding device. Using the tube, air is sucked out, the gas mixture pumped in. With the tube now fitted, the panel is sent on its way to where the gases are waiting for it. Sixteen at a time, the panels enter this long chamber. In here, neon and xenon gases are pumped into the cells. The first step towards creating plasma. So, now the TVs are full of gas. But there's one major problem. Charged neon and xenon only generate ultraviolet light, something invisible to the human eye. The solution? A very clever bit of chemistry. Each cell has been coated, alternately with a red, green and blue chemical called a phosphor. And what this means is about to be revealed in the testing area. Soon, and for the very first time, electricity will pass through these cells. All the science and engineering has been building to this moment. This technician is creating an electric storm right in front of our eyes. Plasma is born. And this burst of colored light shows the phosphors are working. Red, green and blue phosphors have transformed the invisible into colors we can see. Plasma can identify more than a million colors. That's more colors than the human eye can recognize. I think plasma is a great technology. Each time these screens are turned on, they need to create plasma. 
With a chemical reaction going on inside your TV, you want to make sure it's safe. So, they're sent to the aging room. In here, hundreds of screens are switched on and left for hours to make sure the gases and technology are stable. The plasma screen is complete, but it isn't yet a TV set. There are no tuners, no receivers, no aerials. The plasma TV still has a long way to go. Generating sound and vision involves reels and reels of individual components being fired, one at a time, onto thousands of circuit boards. High-pressure plastic injection machines produce all the different front covers for the varying sizes of TVs made here. Then, everything is brought together on the production line. Circuit boards which control the signal, the power, formats, and tuners are all placed on the inner back wall of the TV. But right now, the screen has poor contrast ratio, giving off a kind of milky gray light. So another screen is added to increase the contrast. Then, everything is checked. Color bars make sure each TV is producing the correct colors, whites, and blacks, rather than muddy grays. Test patterns, formats, and functions all need to be assessed. These guys at least get to watch the front of the TV screen. Spare a thought for Satoshi Maruono. It may sound like robotic bedlam, However, to Satoshi's ears, all the chirps and squeaks are perfection. Until it sounds any different, of course. And some tests involve a highly technical process. He's listening for loose screws. Satoshi sees the backs of hundreds of TVs every day, but he'd much rather be watching the front. I love TV so much that I make them as my job. I don't have a plasma TV yet, but I am dreaming about it. After packing and boxing, there is still a final check reserved for just one or two televisions. Every now and again, a television is taken off the line and has to enter the vibration chamber. A metal floor plate shakes up the TV to make sure everything is screwed together properly and that there are no loose parts. When you open your TV's packaging, everything should have been shaken, but not stirred. As the workday comes to a close, the TV sets are loaded onto trucks to be shipped and sold around the world. It may be the end of this TV's manufacture, but it's not the end of the story for Plasma. What started in the skies with the northern lights has found its way into space. Plasma gas is now used as a propellant in spacecraft thrusters. And back in the factory in Japan, the television sets quietly dream of the images they are about to show the world, as well as the countries they themselves are about to visit. Thank you.